بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اجمعين اما بعد um it was nice to hear from brother daniel and i envy our dear brother daniel uh, because it was it was in his house that our dear departed sheikh uh, yusuf islahi used to live and that's an incredible blessing of Allah Azza wa Jal. <clears throat> Farooq Raza yesterday at ISCJ, the masjid of our dear Sheikh uh, Imam Shibli, he commented that this is a blessing that Allah placed in his lap through no effort of his own and through no, uh, and, and something that he did not deserve. But that really, what, that really is what life is. Everything that we enjoy is a gift. Allah is Al-Wahhab, and He gifts us with these various blessings in our lives. And Daniel was very fortunate uh, at this young age to have caught a glimpse of this major scholar who is a bridge between the past and the present. Uh, our Sheikh Yusuf Islahi, Rahimahullah uh, Ta'ala, he was someone who was born in 1939. So he was two or three generations removed from us. But Allah blessed him with an incredibly long life, a blessed life, a productive life. And he was someone who brought that past to us. And that's something, it's, it's incredible, it's an incredible blessing for all of us. And we're now, after he is gone, um, we must pray for him, we must remember him. And more importantly, uh, to try to continue that work that he did and you know, his his whole mission was about his work. It was not about his own personality. Anyone who knew him knew that he was not one to, um, you know, put himself forward or speak about himself. He was someone who was always about the mission. Uh, he was a follower and a, a he loved uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam immensely. Um, remembering him would bring him to tears. And really, he lived his days, his nights, his waking state, his sleeping state, uh, just continuing the message uh, of our beloved Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa wasallam. And there was no tinge of uh, ego in him or arrogance in him. And um, there's a lot we can learn from him. In a few minutes, I just wanted to highlight a few of his qualities. And you know, I, I'm not sure uh, in in this particular program or people have presented his life formally at least in the last couple of days um, his biography was presented but the first thing we need to appreciate that he was an incredible scholar his scholarship was so deep and profound he was someone who achieved the highest levels of learning um, in the islamic curriculum in the islamic system uh, someone who had memorized the quran started he did everything right. He started his journey by memorizing the Quran at the age of 11. <clears throat> and not only he's someone who memorized the Quran like many of us, and then only to go on and forget it. From that moment, from the age of 11, he was leading prayers. Initially, it was in the Nafil prayer because he used to joke that uh, in the Hanafi school, a child who's not baligh is not allowed to lead prayers. So they would not let Mona re lead prayers in the masjid, but he would lead the Nafil prayers at least. Um, and then when he was Bali, when he achieved, uh, when he became an adult, he began leading Salat al-Taraweeh. And what did he do with Salat al-Taraweeh? He led for the next how many years? I did a calculation. I wrote an Arabic biography of his. And my estimate is how many years did he lead Salat al-Taraweeh beginning to end the entire Quran? Um, subhanallah, it was uh, my estimate is 75 years of his life. Uh, it's definitely more than 70. It's probably about 75 years of his life that he led the Salat al-Taraweeh, finished the entire Quran, and doing tafsir in the evenings after uh, reciting the Quran or leading the prayers. That's an incredible life. Um, he achieved mastery in uh, fiqh, in uh, Islamic jurisprudence in the Hanafi school, uh, to the point that he was writing books of fiqh and answering questions. He was a first-rate faqih. And many of the difficult questions people had in various organizations in the United States, 
they would go back to uh, we would go back to Sheikh Islahi and refer things to him. Um, my entire life, I've seen senior scholars or senior individuals who would save their questions when Malna would arrive. Sheikh Islahi, um, they would ask him, and he would answer with his typical style, with deep knowledge. In his answers, he would connect people with Allah and His Messenger. His answers were not about schools of thought. It's not about uh, connecting people with what he wanted them to do. His answers were designed to instruct and teach people, and that's what a good uh, uh, a good scholar does. A true scholar does. You know, he recognizes that uh, answering people's questions with great blessing, and it's a chance to remind people about Allah and to educate people about Allah and to connect them with Allah and His Messenger. And that's what really it's all about, connecting people with Allah and His Messenger. Um, and that's what he did best. Um, his knowledge, you know, what I wanted to say was, um, his knowledge is one thing. You can write, um, and inshallah, there are people that plan to write uh, about him and a biography of his, but his knowledge fills shelves. If you see behind me, this is my library, I'm at home. But if you see, I don't know if you'll be able to see, but in the corner, I have an entire shelf with his name on it and some of his books right there on the extreme uh, end of the screen at the bottom. And this is not even his complete books because I don't really read Urdu. So I didn't, I, I, I've interacted with him, learned from him personally. As far as reading his books, um, I haven't read a lot of his books um, except the ones in English and so this is just a partial representation of how many books that he wrote. Um, it is said that he wrote 60 books, but I've been hearing that for many, many decades. And he's been writing pamphlets and books uh, beyond that. Um, so I believe he wrote close to 100 books. This is his scholarship. But his scholarship, what I wanted to say is um, he had something unique and rare um, that his deep knowledge was combined with a number of things that you don't really find uh, in uh, perhaps other uh, scholars of his generation or our generation. Um, number one, like his scholarship, his knowledge was combined with incredible wisdom and maturity. And that's something that we thrived um, getting from him. You know, all of us or many of us, we've studied, we know the answers, we have the knowledge in the books, uh, we refer to, uh, refer to things but that's not what wisdom is. Wisdom is knowing what to say and when to say it and knowing how to answer, and knowing how to bring uh, the, the information or the knowledge of the rulings to people and knowing what people need. And he was a master of that. Um, he knew um, how to assess situations. He knew how to speak to people and he knew what they needed. And we thrived at uh, learning how he answered questions was incredible. Um, and it's not just giving the ruling. Nowadays, people think scholarship is just memorizing these books and knowing the answers, just providing the answers. No, the process of fatwa is much deeper than that. It requires not only knowledge of the answers, and but also requires some knowledge of the person asking and the circumstances. And our sheikh, uh, he had this incredible maturity. So many senior scholars throughout uh, the United States would ask him uh, <clears throat> to see how he would answer certain questions when they already knew the answers, but they would learn from his wisdom and his maturity. So that's one thing that his uh, knowledge was enhanced with. Um, a second thing I wanted to uh, relate was that, you know, in addition to his knowledge, <clears throat> he had incredible adab, incredible uh, style of mannerisms and that's something was really really amazing uh, <clears throat> you know um, Imam Malik's mother she sent him to study with Sheikh Rabia and she told him ta'allam al-adab uh, qabla an ta'allam ilmihi min ta'allam min adabihi qabla an ta'allam min uh, ilmihi learn from his manners before you learn from his knowledge and that's something that uh, is missing in this new world and this world of online learning, this world of YouTube and recordings and lectures and, 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 and everything is online. You miss that human connection. And knowledge in Islam, ilm was always, uh, the human connection was also always an intrinsic and integral 
part of that. Why? Because there's so much you can learn from a person in addition to his words, but there's so much to learn from his style, his mannerisms, and and and, and the way a person conducts him, conducts himself. So Sheikh Islar, he had impeccable manners. Um, and that's something in the latter years of my life, I really thrived. In the beginning, I would focus on his knowledge and questions and learning his tafsir. But in the later years, um, interacting with him, that's all I thrived and I wanted to learn from him. Um, Ibn Sirin, for instance, he said um, that um, كان, كان adab قبل العلم, ثم العلم. Um, that people used to seek out the adab, seek out the manners of people. Kanu, uh, he also said on another occasion, كانوا يتعلمون الهدى كما يتعلمون العلم. And that's missing, I think, for many young people today. We want to, uh, there's, there's this idea of mentorship, which is much more important than just learning the information and sitting with the scholar, taking the classes, passing exams. But there's so much to learn from just spending time being in the company of of ulama, of, of real scholars, people of taqwa, people who are close to Allah, because you learn so much from from just the way they conduct themselves. And I would love, I would call Farah Raza frequently whenever I had time, where are you going? Just give me a chance to go with you. And I would just tag along in the back seat. And I learned so, wallahi, I learned more traveling with Shaykh Yusuf Islahi perhaps than his lectures, than his tafsir lectures. And, and that's just from, you know, un, you know, just being in the company of, of, of such people. And that's something lacking. Um, another great uh, feature of his knowledge was <clears throat> that um, his incredible knowledge, as deep as it was, was coupled with this deep selflessness. That's another thing that's missing today. Um, there was no uh, ego in him. There was, he never promoted himself. Um, someone who accomplished so much, has so many books. Um, so there, even, there were even moments we entered a masjid together uh, with Sheikh Islahi and on the masjid shelf, we saw his books. And some of the people would not know who he was. And, you know, not everyone knows him, but his books preceded him in these in these centers. But he never showed off. He never announced himself. Um, he had this deep humility that's lacking today in this world of celebrity figures and uh, where everyone's presenting and promoting himself. So he was incredible in that regard. Um, I don't know how much time I have, but... You know, these there's so much to say about him. Every single night, we've been sharing some reflections. But our Imam uh, Ahmed al Shibli is here, Brother Ismail is here. So I'll end with that and I'll just ask everyone just reflect over uh, people like this is a blessing that we don't realize when it's until it's gone. It's something, um, you know, the Prophet وسلم, said, Ni'matan maghboonun fihi ma kathirun min al nas, al he pointed out two blessings that are most people don't realize until they're gone. And he just pointed two out. These are the most common ones. This is free time um, and, and health. But we also have blessings of people like Sheikh Islahi amongst our midst, where people, you know, just didn't pay him attention to him, didn't benefit from him, perhaps, and didn't miss out on his lectures. Now that he's gone, people are, are, are realizing that. May Allah give us the tawfiq to live the rest of our lives in a better way and to carry on the mission and legacy of our dear, beloved Sheikh Maulana Yusuf Islahi, rahimahullah ta'ala. Jazakumullah khairan. Jazakumullah khairan, Dr. Uzaid, for the kind words and for the amazing reminder that we all will learn from. And inshallah, I ask Allah to allow us from those to follow in the footsteps of the Prophet Sallallahu and learn from the teaching of Mawlana Yusuf Islahi. Mm -hmm. uh, up next,